Hey Aquarius, welcome to your reading for June 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading. Yes, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below, including my email address and the readings that I offer, yeah? Just read through that and let me know what you wanna move forward with. If you have trouble deciding, email me, we'll chat a little, bit, a, bit, a little bit about it and I'll help you decide, okay? So keeping it cute and then doing a little bit something different as usual, we're starting with the or I'm um, sorry, the, um, the Golden Universal Tarot for the freestyle reading. And if you're new to the channel, you're getting a view into what the freestyle reading looks like, or at least feels like, because you're not gonna be able to see the cards, but, and the actual spread. But if you're interested, this reading really works very, very well for just about anything, okay? Um, and then we're gonna close the reading with Oracle Guidance as usual, but this month I've decided to go with something new. I've gotten the Sacred Rebels Oracle. I love this deck, you guys, and it's been so on point this month that it's almost a little scary, okay? All right, also keep in mind that um, time is an illusion and energies are fluid, so all of these readings are meant to be timeless. So regardless of whenever you see it, if it's during the month of June, if it's after the month of June and it still resonates with you, then take it. That's the message for you at that moment in time. Okay? Excellent. Getting into the pre-shuffle energies here for you, Aquarius. Um, you started with the Three of Cups, which is celebration. This is also the balance, a union between body, mind, and spirit. But this is a celebration um, because, uh, because somebody's leaving something behind. Eight of Cups. And it has everything to do with reciprocity. So uh, I feel like this might have been a situation that you have been in in a long time. It could be a romantic relationship. It could be um, a job. It could be anything. It could have just been a creative endeavor, maybe even a hobby that you were kind of burnt out on. But um, the Two of Wands here is talking about, which is underneath the deck, is talking about a choice being made, a decision being made. You might be in the process of making this, this decision over this month or whenever this re reading hits you, or maybe you've already made the decision. But I think what I'm picking up here in terms of this situation is that the best thing to do would be to decide on what is going to be reciprocal, what is going to be balanced for you, what's going to give you that balance between give and take. That's the best place to make this decision and move forward from, okay? Cool, Aquarius, so let's, let's just get into this. I'm going to give this one more shuffle and then we'll get started. All right, here we go, guys. <clears throat> Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of June 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, interesting thing happening right now, Aquarius. As I was channeling the energies, I do like to picture the zodiac symbols. And as I was channeling your energy, the Libra symbol kept coming up. So you might be dealing with a Libra. You might have Libra in your chart, or you might just want to watch the Libra reading. It may resonate with you. For my Aquarians, I'm going to give this three shuffles here. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. And then we'll see what we've got for your month of June. Or at least what wants to come through for this month. Doesn't have to resonate this month. It could resonate later, but y'all get the picture already. All right, Aquarius. Last shuffle. <clears throat> cool. Overall energy, Aquarius. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. You have the three of swords. Give me a second. My throat's getting a little scratchy. I need to drink some water. Okay, Aquarius. <clears throat> You're starting out with the three of swords. 
Now, this is absolutely why you could be working on walking away from something and why your choice to walk away from something actually is quite celebratory. Because what I'm feeling here for this circumstance, whatever it is, it really could be anything, a job, a relationship, a friendship, a partnership, whatever, a creative endeavor, it really doesn't matter. But it feels like this Three of Swords energy, it feels like this has been hurting you for some time. And you needed to walk away from this a long time ago. That's what I'm hearing. Ah, King of Cups. You could be dealing with a Scorpio, maybe a water sign in Cancer or Pisces. Yeah, this could be a really emo uh, emotionally manipulative individual that was kind of putting you through the ringer. But this is also your sense of self, your emotional responsibility that's allowing you to make some sort of decision and walk away from something in the best way for you, okay? Maybe that's what you need to adopt. You really could be dealing with a Scorpio energy because underneath that, you've got the tower. With the world. That is what I like to see, Aquarius. That absolutely is what I like to see here. Why? Because you are taking emotional responsibility, saying enough is enough and moving on. Closing out the cycle. Very good, Aquarius. Very, very good. And I'm kind of feeling like it's kind of like your, your humanitarian element or humanitarian aspect or your strong propensity towards humanitarianism, that could have been holding you back on an emotional level. And it may even have been like, maybe this wasn't like a specific person, maybe it was a group, a group of people, or maybe it was just the circumstances themselves that were keeping you emotionally manipulated in sticking it out or continuing to stay with this situation even though it was breaking your heart all the way through, okay? Woo-wee, Aquarius. All right. So getting into your reading now, the rest of your reading, the meat and potatoes, you can say. Um, first half and second half of the reading. You could look at it as the first half and second half of your month. I recommend you look at it as first half, second half of your reading. Yes, because energies are fluid. Time is an illusion. Things are flowing all over the place. So a message could come out in one spot, another message could come out in a completely other spot, and they're totally intertwined. Just take it as it resonates. But if it does resonate as the first half, second half of your month, please, by all means, t go with it, okay? First set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius, in the first half of your month, you get the lovers. I'm hearing divine partnership. Union is at stake or union is at hand, but this also could be your own inner union. But yes, this absolutely, also this could be a Gemini energy. You could be dealing with a Gemini, but this is absolutely the choice you needed to make. This was not an easy choice, was it Aquarius? No, it sure was not. And it's the humanitarian effort that's coming into play here. It's almost as if you feel like you're less of a humanitarian or you're less of a light worker or you're less of a human being by disconnecting yourself from something that's breaking your heart. Please. But that's the way it looks. But you see here, this was a choice between vice or virtue. Virtue being honoring yourself and your happiness, your health, your wholeness versus virtue of just constantly giving, 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 giving and allowing yourself to be depleted, right? Yep. The lovers is coupled with the two of wands again. This is absolutely about making a choice. And this is, you, this is the universe orchestrating a situation in which you are learned, you are learning or taught about number one boundaries, which was the first thing I heard, but making the right decision for yourself in the face of what is deemed or viewed as the right thing to do. The only right thing to do is the thing that honors your own self the most because you cannot be there for other people to the capacity that you truly wish to. And for some of you, this is a standard you're holding yourself to, but you cannot 
honor or meet or reach that standard if you're not there for yourself to begin with. And this is exactly what this is teaching you to understand and to make your decisions from. To hone your focus within. Yes? Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius. In the first half of your reading here, you have the Four of Swords. Very good. So now this is a time for you to rest, relax, contemplate, heal. You have some recuperation to do. Because this Three of Swords energy, man, that's some massive, heavy shit. And it took you a long time to break away from it. Therefore, you need a little bit of a break. But you also need some time to really allow the energies that, and, and the lessons that you learned to fully integrate. Rest, relaxation, maybe even taking a vacation. I would recommend that if you can do it. Treat yourself, hunty. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being silly. Four of Swords is coupled with the Queen of Pentacles. Nurture yourself. Mother yourself. Heal yourself. Allow yourself to breathe. Take a rest for a minute. If you want to get pampered, get pampered. Treat yourself to a spa day. You could have a Capricorn in your life. You could have Capricorn in your chart. Or maybe this is another Earth sign, Taurus or Virgo. But this really just feels like a motherly energy. Pampering yourself. Yes? A motherly energy, a nurturing energy. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Aquarius, you have the Knight of Pentacles moving forward slowly but steadily. As a fixed energy, Aquarius, I feel like you are no, sh this is not difficult for you to move step by step, pace by pace, or, or, or uh, uh, piece by piece. You're not trying to rush anything. You're never trying to rush anything. And yet, the Knight of Pentacles is your challenge here. That's weird. Maybe it's just that you're just so ready to be done with the situation. You're just so ready to go that this feels agonizing. And maybe that's why this is what you need to be doing. Resting, recuperating, healing, allowing things to integrate. But you see, this is actually part of your situation here, part of your lesson the choice to be there for yourself. You don't have to constantly be doing, going, 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 going. I gotta get this done, I gotta get this done. But that needs to be done, this needs to be done, that needs to be done. Check it out, Aquarius. That's not gonna get done, that's not gonna get done, that's not gonna get done if you haven't taken care of yourself. Knight of Pentacles is coupled with the Ace of Cups, Aquarius. This is that energy of saying, slow down, nurture yourself, love yourself, give yourself a hug, treat yourself to a spa day, go on a goddamn vacation already. <laughs> Ugh. All right. Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Aquarius, you have the Eight of Swords. Ah. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why? Okay, but you're breaking free of this mental prison. That's a good thing. Eight of Swords is coupled with, yes, Temperance, Sagittarian energy. You could have a Sagittarius energy in your chart. You could be dealing with a Sagittarius. But you don't have to rush this process. This is another reason why you need to take a break because you need to allow yourself the time to really work yourself out of this frenzy or mental prison that you've gotten yourself into. And I'm not trying to, I'm not like throwing shade, I'm not placing blame, but like, damn, let yourself breathe for a second. This is not an overnight situation. Obviously, Knight of Pentacles, this is not an overnight situation. Okay, even though I, I just I heard some of you, even though it might have it might feel like you got into it overnight, 
chances are you're not going to be able to get out of there that quickly. You know what I mean? Part of this mental entrapment is the lack of patience. You get it. All right. Moving forward into the second half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius. You've got the chariot. All right. Cancerian energy. Um, but this is balanced and moving forward with direction, purpose, understanding yourself better, knowing exactly what it is you want to be doing, the capacity in, in which you want to be doing it, and the capacity in which you can do it. So that means really being realistic with yourself, logical with yourself, and not overexerting yourself, but keeping yourself balanced so you, that you can maintain your momentum, maintain your speed, and stay on your path. Couldn't really ask for anything more, or at least much more, Aquarius. The chariot is coupled with... The Ace of Swords, I told you, knowing, figuring out, saying, oh, this is how I stay in balance. Oh, this is how I keep doing this line of work or this type of work for an extended period of time. Now I get it. Excellent. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius. You got the emperor aries energy could have aries in your chart could be dealing with an aries but this is the master of thine own domain staying in control not allowing someone to sway you from something or uh, or doing something taking some sort of action that you know is best for you the only person that knows best for the individual is the individual themselves no one else. People can make suggestions. People can help you figure it out. People can help you flesh it out, uh, enact it. But ultimately, you are the only person that knows best for you. The emperor is coupled with the Ten of Cups. When you do this, when you allow yourself to be in control of your life and not let people places, circumstances, situations to uh, dictate your life, then you find emotional fulfillment. Then you find true happiness, bliss, contentment. But you have to be the one that's in control of your happiness, of your fulfillment of your contentment. If you are already doing something and you feel great about it, but you've got all these other people in your ear talking shit like, nah, you could do better. But, I'm sorry, who are you? <laughs> what? D when, when did you become the authority of my life and happiness? I'm pretty sure I am not the one that gave you that, that job or that task or that, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Status, status, that classification. So again, who the fuck are you? Because I'm in control here, and I'm actually quite happy. So, bye. <laughs> your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Aquarius, you've got... Oh, wow, the three of wands now, okay. Being on the right path, potentially waiting for some sort of return on an investment. But I kind of feel like this three of wands here is saying, is you believing that, wait a second, I'm already on the path. Wait a second, I'm already, I've already made the choice and I'm already taking the actions. Huh. Or conversely, maybe the challenge for you is yes, having made the choice and now taking the action, like following through. Okay. Three of Wands is coupled with, ooh, the Queen of Cups. So now you have the King and the Queen here. Counterpart situation, yes. Masculine and feminine energy, yes. This definitely does feel like the balance between masculine and feminine energy, but this is also kind of mirroring the energy that the Queen of Pentacles was giving in that nurturing and that mothering energy. This is the compassion, the understanding, the empathy. Having compassion, understanding, and empathy for yourself in terms of knowing that you're already on the right path. 
loving yourself enough to understand that you are good enough just as you are. You don't need to be any more or any further than you are in this moment. Closing message or potential outcome, Aquarius. The two of swords, though. What is that about? Honestly, I want to tell you again, Aquarius, you don't need to be any more or any further than you already are in this moment. You're exactly where you need to be. So there's no reason to feel so indecisive about this. Two of swords is coupled with the seven of pentacles. All right, so what's gonna help you, what's gonna help you come out of this indecisive energy is taking stock. Maybe some of you need to look back on your path and recognize how far you have come, just how far you've come how much you've accomplished, how much you've grown, how much you've changed. It's almost as if you're looking at this harvest that you have in front of you and saying, God, this just isn't enough. But why isn't it enough? Why? You have to answer that question for yourself. That is, in fact, a rhetorical question, okay? Okay. Getting into your oracle guidance now, Aquarius, Aquarius, yes. All right, three shuffles here for my Aquarians, and we'll see what we've got for you. One more shuffle for my Aquarians. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus for the month of June 2019, or at, le at least whenever this message resonates with you. Yes, here we go. Best message, please, spirits, close out this reading for my Aquarians. For my Aquarius, Aquarius. Here we go. Ah. Card number 37, which is a 10. Oh. There's two here. I'm just going to read one, but I want you to know, because this actually falls right in line with what I've been saying, but I'm only going, I'm going to read this one, card number 37, focus on the light, but then also you have card number five that came out and it says, follow your own rhythm. We're just going to leave that one there, but we're going to read the message because that's literally exactly what we were just talking about. Follow your own rhythm, but here, focus on the light. Yes. <clears throat> Ooh, oh, oh Lord. Okay, this is another long one too. <laughs> this one's literally three pages long. <laughs> okay, gosh, really? Sorry about that, guys. Someone's blocking traffic, it sounds like. Excellent. <laughs> okay, card number 37, focus on the light. A tremendous force of light is gathering around you. It is attracted to the purity of your intention to create from your heart. As your intention grows, so does the light. As the light grows, so does your intention. Magic wants to happen for you now. The synchronicity, perfect timing, opportunities, and information that are needed will seem to be drawn right to your door. You may start to feel as if you cannot walk outside without stumbling into something helpful, wonderful, and inspiring. You might be startled at this interplay of light with your heart. I'm sorry, let me say that again. You might be startled as this interplay of light with your heart evokes many new successes and attracts an abundance of opportunities your way. You may need to adjust as the field of light grows stronger and its effects become more palpable. It may bring rather dramatic improvements into your world. You may be uncomfortable or feel out of your depth with these changes. This would be understandable, but it would be a shame for you to hold on to that resistance for anything more than a brief moment. <clears throat> Any resistance or fear will inhibit the continuing free flow of the light so that it can manifest its beauty through you in the physical world where it is needed. 
It is best to stay focused on your pure heart and intentions. Just allow all else to happen of its own accord without making it mean anything too personal. Simply let it be the workings of the, gre of the great light of love flowing through a pure heart and touching the world. Even if the light that is drawn to you and flows through you has some dazzling effects, you don't have to get caught up in it. Doing so might start you worrying that you are unworthy or that you are, you are unable to keep up. Oh my God. I am so sorry about that, but we're gonna power through. This will constrict possibilities rather than allowing the free flow of the light. You have permission simply to be appreciative of the light and to enjoy it as you continue to focus on what really matters, the pure intention of your heart and your desire to create. If you are not sure what this means or how it would look on a practical level, consider this example. A service-oriented business becomes very successful financially and gains considerable commercial power which can be used to help promote its message or assist other organizations in gaining exposure to the public. Of course, that power could be used in less pure ways such as boosting personal ego rather than promoting the agenda of the heart. Power games and politics might start erupting as the people grab for their share and suddenly the purity of the project begins to crumble. Sometimes success can be like a powerful mirror and a shining light, uh, I'm sorry, and a shining searchlight as it shows up what was, yeah, what was already within someone or a group of people. Under the spotlight of success, it is more intense, amplified, and obvious. This can give us an opportunity to sow the seeds of our own destruction or to work on what arises from a heart-centered perspective to create a firmer foundation that supports even greater attainment. How would that work in this example? By returning attention to the heart of why the business was started in the first place. It is wise to maintain focus on the pure, original motivation for the work rather than shifting course to focus on money or influence. To latter are, I'm sorry, the latter are not bad per se, but they are a rather different vibration focused on personal gain rather than heart-centered contribution. When focus shifts from the heart, the underlying energy of any creative project can become contaminated with lower vibrational forces such as fear, which is behind greed, for example. If this is not rectified, that business or creative project will begin to change. It will lose the luster of its original purpose that made it so attractive and magnetic to the light. Its continued ability to grow as a light in the world is diminished. Excuse me. It may end up becoming just another corporate machine, successful according to more conventional measures, or not. The genuine heart-centered success that creates a win-win field of energy for all involved can only be attained, nurtured, and expanded when those creating the project or business remain focused on the purity of their own original intentions. This oracle brings an assurance of success of the highest order, not just commercially, but from the heart. It will manifest as a highly valuable offering to the world. This applies to a project, endeavor, or organization in which you are involved. Your heart will help you realize which group or project it applies to. It may be more than one. However, you must stay focused. Enjoy the glittering lights of success, but don't be distracted by them. Stay on point with what you want to create and why. Stay true to yourself. This oracle also brings another message. Don't be distracted by other paths around you at this time, as you are too close to succeeding on the one you are on now. Diluting your energies in pursuit of too much will slow down your success and the world needs your light to shine sooner rather than later. In time, you may diversify and explore other ways to express yourself, but for now, build what you are working on and know that success is coming swiftly. Yale. So there you have it, Aquarius. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. With that said, I hope you guys have a great June. Yes, I hope you have a great June, and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of July. Yes, take care. Mwah! Bye.